All right, so in this demo walkthrough, we are going to set up global signals, which are really powerful and are mind-blowing if you have not used them before in your projects. Um, they, they're, they're a game changer for sure, pun intended. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a main scene and we're going to add some units to that main scene. And then we're going to have the main scene kick off a signal that says, hey, all of you units, I want you to do something. And we're going to have it animate a spin, just a simple little thing. And then after that, we're going to set up the uh, animation so that when the animation finishes, it's going to send a signal back to main saying, hey, I'm done with our uh, all these units are done with their animation. So go ahead and do whatever you want to do next. So nice little back and forth communication um, across multiple scenes at multiple levels. All right. So uh, we're going to do this from the ground up. So we're going to start right here, create a main scene. I'll burn through a lot of this really quick. Let's get this saved into scenes. Um, We'll add a new folder here, call it unit. We'll add a new scene to that called unit. And once again, unit. All right. And inside a unit, let's add a sprite. Get that set up right there. Okay, let's take a quick look. And inside of unit, we're going to have an animation player and call it spin. There we go. We'll add a property track to the sprite, and we want the rotation degrees. And select the sprite, go to transform, and we'll insert zero as the starting point. And then let's increase the timeout here a little bit for the spin for effect. And we will spin to 360. There we go, got it. A little quick sanity check, good. Okay, so that's going to spin. And the animation player does not start by default, so we're going to add a script here. And what we want is to send a signal here to start that animation player. So what we need to do is go back to main, add a button. This is what's going to kick off our, um, let's see, unit spin. Well, that's not, let's just call it spin unit. It's better. Okay, and then on pressed, oops, didn't add a script yet to main. Let's do that. There we go. And now I should be able to add my pressed event. There we go. And so this is where we want to, to kick off the signal. And so we will go into scenes, create a new folder, call it singletons. You can call it whatever you want, kind of your global scripts. Uh, inside of here, we're going to create a new script. And again, call it whatever you want. I call mine signals. Um, and then once that's here, we can, let me open it, make sure it's open. Clean all this out. We're going to add our signal and uh, spin units can be the uh, name of the signal, whatever you want. And then we go up to project, project, no, go up to project, project settings. And in auto load, um, we are going to select the, the script that we just created, signals.gd. And then it puts a name in here automatically for you, but you can name this whatever you want. Recommend um, naming it the same as your file name. And I try to keep mine short because you end up typing them a lot. And you want them to be easy to remember and all that. So we're just gonna click add and that's gonna add it here. You can rename it here if you want by double clicking. Um, you can also toggle it on and off uh, for whatever reason. And you can also delete it here if you ever stop needing it. So we'll close and now that's set up that signals.gd script as a global script. So I can have global functions in here, global signals, uh, whatever else. All right. So now that we have this set up, let's go into main. And what we want to do is we want to reference our global signals script and we want to emit a signal and we want to emit the spin unit signal and that's it. So on button press, we're going to emit this. And then who do we want to listen? The units. So we're going to go into units. We're going to call our global script again. We say this time we're going to connect to a global signal that we want to listen for. And when it gets called, we want you to execute a function with the same name inside of this script right here. So do this. So you can name this whatever you want. 
This could be ASDF as long as it matches your function, like so. Uh, I use the same name so that when I do a global search in my solutions, my projects, I can see all the signals, um, the, the emissions of those signals and the connections for those signals all in one place. Because sometimes you can have dozens of these emitting uh, to the same signal or even connected to the same signal. Um, and so I just like doing it. Because otherwise you have to search for your signal, then you have to search for your method or your function uh, diff separately, which is kind of a hassle. So this works out nicely for me. All right, so spin units. Uh, we want to, let's see, let's get into the, the unit class here, the unit scene. And we have our animation player. And we just want to play spin. That's it. All right, and we'll clean this up. Okay, and so that's it. So uh, on button press, we can clean this one up too. Okay, so on button press, we are going to emit this signal, and any unit that's out there in the world is going to listen for it and execute this right here. So let's give this a whirl. I think I have everything we need. Let's take a look at main. No, we don't. I have my button, but I actually need an instance of the unit. There we go. Okay, so we'll hit play. And we're gonna click our button, and there we go, it's spinning. So that was done via signal, all right? And so next, what we wanna do is, well, let's add some units, just to show that you know one, one signal can emit and be picked up by multiple units, which is kind of neat and very simple without any code changes or anything. You can just hit play here. And I, I hit Control D while I'm in 2D view, and that's cloning these on the left, if you don't know. And then spin, there we go. Now they're all spinning, because they're all listening to that same event, doing the same thing. So next, what we want to do is we want to go into Unit, and what we want to do is go into the Animation Player, and when it's done animating, we want to send a signal back to main. And so we're going to call our global script, and we're going to emit a signal, and we'll say Done Spinning. And this time, uh, we'll pass in ourself, just so whoever's listening can do something with me if they want, me being the unit. All right, so in main, um, we are going to go up here into ready, and we're going to go into our global script, and we're going to listen via connect. So uh, done spinning, I think it was. And when you're done, I want you to call this method, done spinning. Okay. And we're passing self, so we're going to be looking for a unit here. And what can we do? We can delete them. We can print them. So let's just print. There we go. And lastly, we just need to make sure that we have defined our global signal here in our global script. And that's it. All right. So what the expectation here is, is that on button press, we're going to spin on the units. All the units that are listening via the spin units are going to animate. And when they're all done animating, they're all going to call this method right here. And then they're all going to emit done spinning. And whoever's listening for this event, which main is, is going to print out the unit. Right? Let's hit play. And we'll hit spin unit. They're all spinning. All right, they're all done, and they all printed themselves out here. All right, so that's a nice little back and forth. We can see that we have some warnings, and those are expected. Uh, what we have here are uh, Godot does not know that other scenes are utilizing these global signals. It think, it's looking for somebody to use them inside of this script. Uh, the way we deal with that is we go into Project Settings, into General GD Scripts somewhere here. I think I missed it. Where are you? Oh, I was already on it. So um, under debug GD script, uh, unused signal, you just uncheck this and then you won't get those warnings anymore. Um, and then there's also a, close this real quick. If you go into main, anytime you use the signals connect like this, it's trying to return a value that you could use and you could ignore it. I think if you do like this, uh, it's ugly, it's a bit noisy, so I don't do that. Um, I don't ever use a return value uh, and so, 
what you can do is go in here under debug GD script and uncheck the return value discarded. And then those warnings will go away. And then I think we have one in here just because we have an unused property being passed in. And let's let's see what happens here. If I restart, oop, I still have one. What do we got? Uh, mismatch main. So whatever, it's just the main um, because I have lowercase files in here and uppercase. So normally I, I all my files are lowercase just out of habit. Um, so whatever, you can ignore this. And that's it. So that's global signals. Um, really powerful stuff. Game changing, in fact. So I uh, hope this helps you get started with them. Cheers. Bye.